In the last days of our public ministry, not long from our Lord's crucifixion, his trial before Pilate, his trial before Annas and Caiaphas, which led to that crucifixion. Condemnate well, condemnation on the part of the priest because he was impious. He claimed to be God. He broke all the traditions. In effect, they're saying, you weren't paying the temple tax. And our Lord's answer, of course, why should I? You're the ones who should pay it to me. I'm boss of the temple. I am God, the Son of the Heavenly Father. The Herodians, in this instance, represented the opposite point of view. You're revolutionary. You only do pious things. You don't obey the emperor. And that's ultimately the charge on which Pilate washed his hands and handed Jesus over to be crucified. A threat to Tiberius Caesar. One of the greatest paranoid psychopaths that ever ruled in the history of mankind. So they, by anticipation, we're going to find out whose side is he really on. The Herodians couldn't have cared less about the Pharisees. The Pharisees couldn't have cared less about the Herodians, but they both hated Jesus. And so they concocted the trick question, do we pay the temple tax or the state tax. You contribute to the collection basket here, or do you pay the Internal Revenue Service in modern terms? And the Lord simply said, come on, show me the, the coin. Give me a gold eagle. That's what we would have said before we went off the gold standard. Whose inscription, whose name is on it? Caesar's. All right, and give it back to Caesar's. Money basically belongs to the state, the common good. And if we share in the common good, we ought to contribute to support it. Perfectly reasonable. But then our, ad, our Lord added the catch. But give back to God. But belong, not everything belongs to Caesar, and that's where the conflict arises. Caesar, whether he is in the form of a religious fanatic, or Caesar, whether he takes the form of a dictator. And the dictator can be an individual, or it can be a corporation. A group of judges who claim to be absolutely supreme. You can't appeal from the Supreme Court to the natural law, to the law of God. God doesn't come into the picture. It's the same philosophy. As the Roman emperor, they called themselves gods. Well, David didn't worry about metaphysics and all theology. They didn't care about that. Only one thing, I'm boss, and there's no appeal from me. I have the last word. What our Lord is saying here is there are limits to politics. There are limits to what the state can pretend to have. The state can ask us to pay taxes, but the state does not own the person. Whether well, it's the little child in the womb, say, well, what good is this child? We'll kill it, abort it. Or here is the old man who's suffering from terminal cancer. Or here is an old lady who is unconscious because of heart attack, but she's still living, breathing, useless. They don't contribute to the net worth. So we're not going to pay any more for them. And we can't keep this up much longer, so we'll just help the process along. Good quarry for spare parts. 
same philosophy. Put in those terms, we see that the philosophy is absolutely cool, though it ten, pretends always to be merciful. The key point that Pope Benedict XVI is constantly making, the same point that St. Peter made, they got it from our Lord. We're not here to destroy the state. In fact, following Christ, we will perfect it. The temple order will be much more humane. To the degree that we accept the principles laid down, at least in the late natural law by Jesus, because that's his law too. He's the creator. St. Paul makes it clear, everybody's going to answer to Jesus at the last day. No, you don't need either the Jewish or the Christian law in the proper sense, because already the law written in the hearts of every person who is made in the image and the likeness of God belongs to God and to God alone, to Jesus. And therefore, St. Peter, when he was called to task before the how come you disobeyed us and preached the good word? It's not a good word for us, St. Peter said, because God commanded us to do so. And we cannot obey men if it means disobeying Christ, because he has the last word. The difference between good and evil is defined not by the state, but by God. And it is a merciful distinction. Therefore, we want to examine her statement. Give to God what is God's. Where is God's name written? Where is his image in Every child of Adam. Adam himself, made in the image and the likeness of God. No, you won't find God's image on coins. You won't find God's image on pigs. You won't find God's image on the products of scientific technology. It has our signatures or someone else's signature. But you will find God's name imprinted on the heart of every man. And it's to make that name clear and to enable one so named to come to salvation, everlasting bliss that Jesus came. The church prays based on this philosophy. Yes, to serve the world and the prince of this world is sheer servitude, slavery. And it is made pretty apparent in what we know today as the concentration camp. They are products precisely of an adoption by a majority to serve the state alone, to declare independence of God, but to serve God is not servitude. It is the beginning of freedom. Yes, we are servants of Jesus. Cana. Read the words of Our Lady to the servants, but at the Last Supper, Jesus called us his friends. We know why he came. We know what he is about. We know how gentle he is in treating us. Let us remember that always, dear brothers and sisters, let us meditate deeply on this profound philosophy of politics, which is more than the philosophy of politics, is a philosophy of life. Let us do our duty. Let us cooperate with our fellow human beings to make this world a better place. But let us recognize that we can only fully succeed if we first give to God what is God, ourselves, our thanks, our adoration, our love. And someone will say, how can we do this? Is not our Lord's invitation to all? Is not our Lord's command to go out and preach the good news of the gospel? Preach penance. Preach conversion. Preach baptism. So that all we try can receive him, adore him, abide with him in this most wonderful sacrament that enables us not only to be in a society of this world, but in a society whose real roots are not from below, but from above, the heavenly Jerusalem, whose first citizen, whose first member, is the mother of God himself. Pray to her always.
that we might remember and have the courage of all those holy martyrs who preferred God's company to that of those who would reject the very possibility of loving and serving one so good. Praise be Jesus and Mary.